The Twitter account of Tracy Ziller, so-called, has been trending for weeks over controversial race-baiting tweets. Now, investigations by a research associate with the digital forensic research lab, Jean Leroux, has unmasked the person behind the account, which has gained more than 300,000 followers. Now we know that at Tracy Ziller is actually a counsellor for the economic freedom fighters. According to LaRue, the fake account benefited financially even from the outrage sparked by the tweets. Jean LaRue joins us now to tell us how he uncovered all of this. Uh, LaRue is a former lawyer, journalist and forensic investigator with the public protector. Jean, thanks very much for your time this morning. On the AM report, Tracy Ziller, I don't think that the, 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 the uh, handle for this account is a mistake either. Uh, good morning. Thanks very much for having me on the show. Um, no, I don't think the name was a mistake at all. Um, I think the inclusion of Zilla um, just shortly after Ellen Zilla's own um, little furor on Twitter a few weeks ago was by no means an accident. So tell us about how, I mean, I suppose there, there's a long list of, of steps that you need to take to get to the bottom of an account like this. But how do you go about it and how, I suppose, do the missteps of people who put, who put up accounts like this, how do they help you do your job of get to, getting to the bottom of who they are? Um, we, when we do this kind of disinformation research, uh, one of the biggest hurdles that we have is attributing a specific network or a disinformation campaign uh, to a specific individual or a specific group. Um, uh, if you'll recall, a few years back, we had the Gupta bots. Mm. And in that case, what we kind of had to do was look at who benefits from this specific campaign. So uh, in the case of the Tracy Zilla account, what we did is we looked at the links being shared from the Twitter account. Um, in the space of, I think, about five days, the uh, account sent out a, a little more than 100 tweets. And about 62% of those were links to one of three websites. And what you can then do is look at who owned those three websites to determine who benefits from them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was happening was that the, uh, the, the account, which was one of a whole network of accounts, uh, Tracy Silla was just the most prominent in that network. They were basically amplifying these links pointing to websites owned by this one individual. Mm. So, Jean, for those of us who are hearing about... Uh, this kind of disinformation campaign that's brought on by a fake account of this nature. Why is it important for us to get to the bottom of what is happening with an account like this? What is the aim of sowing this kind of disinformation? Um, well, the aim generally differs. Um, if you take into consideration the Gupta bots, their aim, they had a very specific political and reputational aim. Uh, in this specific case, the aim seems to have been a monetary one. Uh, the, all of these ads were monetized with uh, Google's AdSense program. So all of the clicks, all of the traffic being funneled through to those these sites would end up making money for this EFF counselor. Mm. So the aim in this specific case was simply just to, to make a buck. And in order to do that, he leveraged these racially charged issues because it generates outrage. Uh, there's quite a lot of research that shows that outrage and conf confirmation bias uh, makes us share specific social media posts a lot more. Yeah, yeah. And this is, this is nothing new, this issue of disinformation of social, uh, on social media. I mean, social media, on the one hand, such an incredibly powerful tool that's changed our job, certainly my job as a journalist, uh, for the better in many ways, but so many drawbacks going as far back as... Donald Trump's election campaign and the involvement of social media there. What are some of the drawbacks that you found when it comes to how social media has opened up the world for us in many ways? Uh, I mean, there's obviously pros and cons to, to social media and the way that it's being used. Um, I think it, it's very important for people to be critical of the sources and critical of the accounts that they do engage with. Um, uh, if, for example, you can take the, these a lot of these disinformation campaigns leverage on social divides in order to um, you know, either generate money or to wage political campaigns. Uh, you mentioned the 2016 elections in the US. In, in that specific case, there were Macedonian uh, troll farms that were busy playing both sides of the field to generate outrage. They would actually take a stake in both sides of sensitive issues 
and then use that to funnel um, the traffic through to different websites of theirs, uh, just to make money off of that. Yeah. So it's very important to be critical of the sources, be sure of who you're engaging with. And um, for me, probably one of the biggest drawbacks is that uh, a lot of this has a way of undermining critical issues that are worth discussing. Mm. Uh, we saw that with the white monopoly capital campaign that degenerated into a um, a kind of a bot slander instead of an actual issue that, that needed to be addressed. And a similar thing here now, um, by using race to, uh, you know, kind of leverage a disinformation campaign, you're taking away from that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And in the age of COVID-19, there's now the issue of misinformation around the virus, around the pandemic. Uh, I was reading an article just in preparation for this interview uh, that said Twitter had taken down some 15,000 fake accounts uh, sowing misinformation on social media. And, I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds of thousands, as you say, of these bot farms that uh, are formed just exactly for this reason. Exactly. Um, I mean, we've, we've kind of uh, taught ourselves to gear up every time there's something, some breaking news, whether it's elections, uh, whether it's the Australian fires, whether it's the um, dining of an airplane in, in, uh, in Iran. Uh, with all of these world events, there are, there's these disinformation campaigns and misinformation campaigns that spring yeah. up from that. Yeah. And um, so we've kind of geared ourselves up to look out for those and then try and stem them before they can get out of hand too much. So, you know, we might know how to tell the uh, bot farm from... Uh, a, a reputable source you know we follow people that we know or organizations that we know are reputable but for ordinary people how do they make that decision um i would think that the, it differs from from case to case some and especially lately the a lot of the fake accounts have become a bit more um, nuanced in the way that they present themselves but um there are various indicators you could look at the creation date of the account how yeah. recently was it created you can look at for example is it using a a fake profile picture or a cartoon or something you can easily do a reverse image search on. Um, you can kind of look at the content that it shares. Is it only sharing partisan content? Is it only retweeting a specific uh, set of websites? All of these are the little signals that you can use to determine whether an account is authentic or not. Yeah, some good advice there for ordinary Twitter users, for myself as well. Thanks very much for your time, Jean Leroux is in fact a former lawyer, former journalist and a forensic investigator uh, with the Public Protector's uh, office. He's now a research associate with Digital Forensic Research Lab. The Twitter account, you may have come across it, at Tracy Ziller. Uh, it's now found to have been a counsellor for the economic freedom fighters who's behind that account and who is in fact making money off of it.